Hi, this is a conversation with Wendy Purnell, who is an investigator of the Property and Environment Research Center. And uh, in some environments, Wendy, uh, the words market ecology may not seem well in the same sentence. Uh, but you have been doing a lot of work in market ecology in uh, Nicaragua. Can you share with us our, your experience? Sure. Um, at PERC, we're the home of free market environmentalism, and we like to understand better how people can harness markets and property rights um, to better the environment. My experience um, is in Nicaragua, where I worked with an organization called Paso Pacifico. Paso Pacifico was dedicated to the conservation of biodiversity in a small um, part of Nicaragua that's extremely biodiverse. Among the many species that we protect in Nicaragua are four species of um, endangered sea turtles. It's totally illegal to poach or to, to harvest sea turtle eggs from the beaches of Nicaragua, but that doesn't stop people from taking the eggs because there's a much older tradition um, of taking these eggs to eat, to sell to restaurants for other people to eat. So we see a conflict of interests on the beaches of Nicaragua. Because it's illegal, there are people from the army that regularly patrol the beaches of Nicaragua at night during turtle nesting season, and people will still sneak through the woods to, to harvest sea turtle eggs. On other beaches where there is no army patrol, the rangers of Paso Pacifico use different methods of protecting the sea turtle eggs. Rather than approaching the situation as a conflict, they approach the situation with a recognition of the informal property rights of these people to take the eggs. For so many years, people have been taking the eggs, feeding their families, getting money to put their kids through school. And what we do is recognize these informal property rights. It's against the law, but there are informal property rights to these sea turtle eggs. So we start a negotiation. We know that for $45, these guys can sell their eggs to the local restaurants or markets where people can consume them. So all we have to do is beat the price. We spend $50 per nest, about. It depends on the situation, of course. Um, but for $50, we can save an entire a nest of, of turtle eggs, which is usually between 80 and 120, depending on the species. Doesn't that raise the price? Ah, good question. We've been doing this for seven years, this direct payments for conservation, and we have seen a little bit of fluctuation on beaches, but we haven't actually had to have, we haven't had to raise our prices. What do you do with the eggs? Once, once you get them, what do you do? We protect them. We have, on, the, on the, some of the beaches, we use different methods on different beaches. On some beaches that are isolated nesting beaches, we just have rangers that are on the beaches 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they monitor the, the sea turtles and they protect the eggs from other predators too, not just from poachers, also from crabs and, and birds and, and uh, kuatimundi, the raccoon-like animals that are there. Um, and then there are beaches that are closer to cities or, or villages where we protect the eggs in a different way. We'll set up a nursery and we'll have people, they, we pay them $5 to identify a, a turtle nest and then we help them move those turtle eggs safely to a nursery where we can lock them up in a fenced enclosed area until it's time for the eggs to hatch. When the eggs hatch and make their way to the sea, then we pay the same people um, the $25 for their work and helping us save the turtles. Where does the money come from? That's a good question. In Paso Pacifico isn't dedicated to free markets like we are at PERC, but because they're dedicated to biodiversity conservation, they want solutions. And in this case, the market solutions are what work. The difference between a free market solution and the market-based solutions that Paso Pacifico uses is exactly as you ask where the money comes from. Uh, we have lots and lots of people who are environmentalists from around the world who are actually interested in putting their money where their mouth is and donating money specifically to protect the turtles. But a lot of our money at Paso Pacifico also comes from, from various government interests, usually outside of Nicaragua, people that are interested in, in protecting these endangered sea turtles. Was it difficult to approach the people in the beaches? I never have had to approach the poachers myself. I've been on the beaches usually doing um, 
the scientific research that we do, trying to get a better understanding of how the turtles migrate. We put satellite um, signals on them and stuff. And, um, but my, my colleagues go through, the, the turtle rangers that we work with, go through intense conflict resolution training so that they are very carefully, have very carefully rehearsed approaches. Of course, the other thing that my colleagues have going for them is they're not gringas like me. They're locals, many of whom used to be poachers, um, who know the customs, who know the people, and they know how to approach people and explain to them the, the situation in a way that, that minimizes or completely eliminates conflict. Wendy, at Paso Pacifico and PERC, how do you measure success with this program? That's a great question for me because I love both organizations so much. At PERC, we measure success by uh, the amount that we can point to great examples from outside of PERC where we just do research. We like to point to examples of envirepreneurs who are harnessing markets and property rights to, to enhance environmental quality. At Paso Pacifico, we measure our success in terms of the species we save, the acreage of forests that we recover, and also actually in terms of economic development because we understand um, on the Paso Pacifico side of things, just as on the PERC side of things, we understand that it's really important um, to tie the incentives so that when you are asking people to make sacrifices for nature or for the environment to change their customs, to change their behavior, that there's an economic incentive for doing so, especially in a country as poor as Nicaragua. Thank you very much, Wendy, for sharing this experience with us, and thank you too.